Hey, I'm Derek Kirk of Effectatron, and today I'm going to show you a quick overview of how to create fur for Redshift 3.5 really quickly and easily. And it's really easy to control and it's super nice because it actually uses a lot of the same controls from C4D. And then you can just control your material with the RS Principled Hair, which is like a secret hidden material for some reason. And it's amazing. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Real quick, I just want to say be sure to check out DerekKirk.net for all of my content and check out our courses on CG shortcuts and my courses on Skillshare. All of these are going to be updated with new content as well with the new big changes with Redshift, so be sure to stay tuned uh, and check those out. Also, if you're watching this when it just dropped, be sure to go over to CG Shortcuts and check out my latest tutorial that just dropped there as well. Super cool, really pretty, and you can download that uh, as well. We've got our pillow here that we just brought in from our asset browser. It's just, there's a pillow set. We just selected one of these pillows. So to add fur onto anything, all you need to do is go up to simulate with that item selected, go down to hair. We have a fur option here, but we're not gonna use that. We're actually gonna use hair. I like it better. And by default, we get all these splines. They're all over the place and they're way too long. So in order to do that, control that, we choose this hair icon here. We go down here to the length and we're gonna change this to six centimeters. So now we have something a little more manageable. Now the cool thing is it automatically creates this hair material tag for us. And inside of this tag, if we double click this here, it opens up our options that we can control here. So we have, if we go to the basic tab, we see we have more things that we can control. We can control the thickness, the kink, the clump, the curl, the length, the frizz, the density, bend, twist, all of these things. And so I'm not gonna go in depth about all of these things, but we're just gonna show how to create some fur really quick. And so one thing we definitely wanna do is we wanna go inside the thickness and we're gonna change our root to about 0.2 and we're gonna grab our tip and just bring that down so our hair is gonna get thinner as it grows out. We're gonna go back to the basic tab. We're gonna add kink just by turning that on. We're gonna add clump, we're gonna add curl, and we're gonna add frizz. We're also going to add length. So first let's go into our length here. And basically what this does is this says uh, I want 20% variation of the length. So if I set my length to 50% and the variation up to 50%, half of the hairs are going to be given a length of 50% and half the hairs are going to be given a length of 100%. So we'll just have some nice textured variation here for different values of hair. Then we're gonna go into, and you can kind of see it in this little display port, but our hair is very hard to see. We're gonna go into our curl and we're gonna lower this down to 80%. So we don't want to curl too much. Our frizz, we're gonna lower down to 80%. And our kink, we're gonna lower down to 80%. Frizz and kink are very similar. They just kind of clump up the hair a little bit. Clump is going to create these patches of clumped hair, like wet fur or something. What we can do is show what clump does. Let's turn clump off. If you enter this right now, we see we have our hair. It doesn't look too bad. It might be a little thick and we can maybe thin that up a tiny bit here. But you can see the difference if we have don't have clump on and we turn clump on and we go into the clump and we crank this up to about 50 and 50 for the count and the clump percent. We're gonna start seeing that kind of clumped matte look that looks like um, like an animal, a wild animal, kind of an untamed kind of look. So we see that clump effect come in and obviously that's a little strong, but you can see how that clumping is working. Pretty cool, and you can see the hair is pretty fast. It's not the fastest compared to like normal materials and stuff, but it is really fast for hair. So for the clump, we're gonna say 20% and 20%. Yeah, so this just gives us a little bit of clump. And what we can do is we'll go into our hair tag here. Go to our thickness, and we're gonna lower this all the way down to 0.1. And our tip, we're gonna go 0.01. So we have really thin tips. Now the next thing we can do is go back into our hair tag here and go down to the dynamics tag. And underneath the properties, we have these properties where we can control the way our hair works and relaxes and stuff like that. And we just wanna up the rest threshold to 55% because we don't really want it to bend too much. We don't want soft hair. The lower the, the value here, the more it's just gonna interact with dynamics easily. So we're going to animation and we're gonna have to go to our frames and turn it up to 48. And I know I'm kind of flying through stuff. This is just a real quick overview. Uh, there's a lot of lot of controls to hair and stuff. Basically, if I hit relax now, it's going to go take 48 frames and just kind of let our hair fall and use those dynamics. 
And we can see that might have fallen a little more than we wanted to, but let's take a look at it in the render view real quick. Yeah, so see how that's fallen? It's kind of just fallen and become a little flatter than we actually want. So all we need to do is go in here and up our rest threshold to 65. And now when we hit relax, that's gonna kind of pop back up and be a little more dynamic here. So the reason to use dynamics, you don't always have to, but the reason to do it, it just kind of gives it a more natural look. So now what we need to do is we need to create a material for this. Now for hair, there's redshift. We can go hit plus, go to create, we can go to redshift, materials, we can choose hair. It's actually not as good. What we need to do is just hit plus, use the redshift material, open that up, go to the node editor, delete this out. We don't want that. We're gonna hit C. I'm gonna type in hair. And there's an option here for principled hair. And you can see how hair is in the legacy build because hair is not as good. Principled hair is better and newer. And I'm not sure why that's not an option up here when you go to create, but principled hair is awesome. And we'll go a real quick overview of principled hair. I go in depth into this in my Redshift Masterclass for materials. So if you wanna know more about hair and stuff and how to color it, we have these options. So basically you've got your reflection controls up here. You've got your color controls here. You have the option to use variation in your colors. You can have different stray hair colors and things like that. And then you have a diffuse kind of override color if you want. So if you want this to be white or like a fun Muppet kind of blue, you would just crank that up and that would instantly make it more of a Muppet blue kind of look. And there we can see that Muppet blue look. So we're going to our principled hair. Scroll down here, we'll turn the diffuse color off. And basically, real quick overview is the way this works. We have melanin and melanin roughness and albedo, and these control the colors. So it works more like real hair. If you want your hair to be darker, it's gonna have more melanin. So it's gonna be black. A tiny bit of melanin here. We're gonna have this nice blonde hair. So what we're gonna do is we go more in detail about the controls of all this stuff, but we're just gonna leave it at a little bit of more melanin here. We're gonna go to the albedo. And we're gonna add just sort of this dark brown a little bit and kind of bring that in just a bit. There we go. And then we want to add a little glint strength variation. And we want a stray hair variation because I think that's just really cool. So we're gonna do kind of this grayish brown hair. We're gonna go bring that up, bring up the variation of that, roughness variation, all these things, just so we have some variation across all of our hairs. There we go. Turn this up a bit more so we have more straight hairs. Not that high. There we go. Okay, so now we've got the color driven here and the color driven here as well. So we can see we've got a lot of our pillows still showing. So all we need to do, let's stop the render view here. Go into our hair tab. We go to the hair. We go to the growth count, and we're going to add just a one right here. So we're just going to add. We're going to add a five right here in front of that. So we're basically adding uh, five hundred thousand hairs. Sounds like a lot, it is. We're gonna save, we're gonna hit render. And you can see how that filled in our pillow nicely with fur. Let's say a really quick overview of an intro into fur, but basically you have all of your controls. You have the hair where you want them to grow, how many you want inside the hair parameter here, as well as the dynamics. And then all of your hair attributes are going to be inside of this tag that C40 creates automatically. You can control all of these individually. And then for your actual color of your hair, we want to use a principled hair tag. So there you go. You get this really nice, cool, furry pillow. Hopefully that was helpful. Real quick intro into that. Again, if you wanna know more about the principled hair node, be sure to check out my materials masterclass. We go into that in depth and really break it down and show a lot of examples and stuff. So if you do a lot of hair, definitely check that out. There's a link for that below. All right, be sure to check out my other materials and things as well. Thank you guys so much. Like, subscribe, and ring that bell for more notifications when new content's coming out. See you guys next time.